Hi, this is Miles McGann, and I'm here to tell you all about the new Medit Orthodontic Suite and how this is going to change orthodontics. So, a little background. In the current orthodontic world, there are currently two workflows. The first workflow was created by Invisalign way back in 1999 and now is being used by many, many companies all over the world. That workflow is scan the patient, send this off to uh, the company who has designers who will then stage it to the best of their abilities. Send that one solution back to you. You then have to try to you know, write the corrections of things you don't like. Back and forth, two or three weeks later, you finally come up with a solution. And now you bring the patient back and talk to them. The other option is what you know companies like Archform or um, Onyx or Maestro or many other companies have done, which is instead of, again, scan the patient, send it off to, instead of sending it to a company, you now send the patient home, go home on the nights and weekends, build up the design, then come back and bring the patient back a week later, and now display to them what to do. Both of these current solutions are not great for the patient, for the doctor, or for the company. Because in all, for all of them, there's a lot of time wasted, a lot of effort put in to get this design. Now, Medit approached me about six years ago to work together to come up with a brand new solution. And I think that we've created it. Now, the orthodontic suite allows us new tools to do everything chair side. And the way that it gets there is that we want to get from the original scan to here in only three minutes. So your assistant, more likely, or the doctor, after scanning the patient, can get to this stage right here within three minutes through a combination of our, the use of artificial intelligence, as well as some very nice algorithms and computer programming. So how, do we, how does that actually work? How do we get here? You know, the first step that the assistants will do, it, or the AI will do actually, the artificial intelligence will set the occlusal plane. I can move this around. I can change it to what I want. But again, it does a very good job with it. Step two, AI will auto-stage the case. So auto-segment the teeth. So again, it'll try its very best to find all the teeth, color code them. And if I'd like to change them, I easily can. Then if a cephalometric x-ray is present, which is not required, artificial intelligence will auto-trace this. It's not a full tracing. It's a minimal tracing of only what's the, the, the tools are actually needed for this case. We are building it to be more, more points, to be a more complete analysis, but our big focus was on doing it quick and efficiently. And so with AI, the less points, the higher the accuracy. And I can say right now, we get this right about 99% of the time. So at any point, if I wanna move one of these points, I simply click this button and I can move those points. The next stage is AI attaches the model to the scan. Again, this happens right almost 100% of the time now. And now we have these nice tools down here to actually give us the cephalometric measurements. Again, not a complete one, but in my opinion, what is most necessary for this case. So for skeletal AP for the transverse, we're using WITS and AMV. For the vertical, we use MMPA. For the incisor inclination, we have upper and lower incisor inclination. Now we're using this traffic light system to very quickly key your, your eyes into areas that are easy, areas that might need a little bit of closer evaluation, and then areas that you're probably gonna need a treatment plan around and make sure that you address. From there, the first piece that not, is not done by AI is this one where you have to choose the arch form to maintain. So either the doctor or the assistant will need to sit down and decide upon what is the best shape of this arch form. And again, we're telling the computer, this is what is currently happening in the mouth. So you got 10 different shapes to choose from, and you try to find one that's not going to expand or constrict the arch. So in, for this case, the non-extraction ovoid number one is a pretty good shape and is the selection that was used. From here, I hit next. Again, AI again tries to find the bite classification. We use molar, but you're welcome to move it to the cuspid or anywhere else that you choose. For this, the AI is searching for the lower buccal groove of the lower six and the mesial buccal cusp of the upper six. And we'll identify this as a class one, class two, or class three case. In this case, it's a class two case. Again, all of those stages can be done in the clinic in under three minutes. My best recommendation would be to have the assistant go through these stages before calling the doctor in. Once they hit this point, you call the doctor in. Now, doctor walks in, 
The patient has been in the chair for, you know, at this point in time, just with the assistant. And now the doctor can immediately start talking about what is going on with this case. Most of my orthodontists personally love this viewpoint because what this viewpoint does is the left side is always the original scan data. The right side is the non-extraction arch form to maintain. What does that actually mean? That means we're holding the lower sixes in place, leveling to the occlusal plane, straightening to the arch form. And again, unlike any other simulation out there, the focus of this is to show you what's actually going to happen in the clinic. If I treat this case with no mechanics and just level and align, what will happen predictably in that case? When I look at this case, because of the class two, you can very quickly see that those incisors are going to advance way far forward. And again, the patient can see that as well. So the doctor has been in the room with the patient for less than a minute. And immediately, if you're talking orthodontics, the patient can see that if I want to straighten my teeth, I'm going to have to use some mechanics. So from here, the software, based upon what was inputted in in the previous steps, can sort through all the different simulations and narrow it down to simulations that are relevant to this case. So for this case, because of the amount of class two, the first one is non-extraction distalization. So in a matter of seconds, you can quickly show the patient, this is an option that I have, and the teeth are in a very good position, and so this is a very good option for us to consider. But those who know ortho know that sometimes distalization can be challenging. So while we'll consider this one, we'll move over to the left side and start to look at what other options that could potentially be used. So looking at the next option, we have a non-extraction minimum anchorage. So again, if I want to stay as a non-extracting case, this would be a potential option for this case. But you can see... With, with the simulation immediately, that this will cause the teeth to move forward. Now, to pain point the doctor once, that's probably not ideal for this case, but you know, we, so we'll probably move on to the extractions. So this one, now we got six or seven different options for the extractions, but let's go down here and look at extractive for fours only with a class two molar finish. Again, a pretty good set of mechanics to use on this case. And so now we have a second treatment option. So from here, you know, the patient's been in the chair for less than two minutes. I've shown them two different treatment options, narrowed this down to what is probably going to be two of the best options for this case. And now we can start looking at other viewpoints. For instance, you know, I may look at this viewpoint and I can start using the video to view how these teeth are going to move. Talk to the patient about the advantages and disadvantages of each different treatment option. And with the patient's input and the doctor's knowledge, advise the patient on what is going to be the best and make a treatment decision. So for this case, both of these treatment options are, are good options. It's just a matter of what the doctor would like to choose. Whatever one they choose, they select it with the blue check mark. So for the instance, let's talk about this one of the distalization. I hit next. Now the software is going to give us an option of, would you like to order brackets, self set up and then help design the aligner or send it off to a professional company for the design themselves. So if I'm looking at a self-setup, I can click on this one, hit confirm, and within seven seconds, AI is going to auto-stage this case for the aligners. So for this distillization plan, software generated out that it would do 55 stages for the upper and 24 stages on the lower. So we have, again, many different viewpoints to look at. What does that actually look like? And we can go through the staging and see if we like the way that this has been staged. If you like the staging, you can move on to the next stage. However, if you do want to do some customization, there are some options for you. The first option we give you is the ability to change the speed of each stage. So the speed of movement is set with the industry standards of 0.25 millimeters and two degrees of rotation. So that is by default, if I'd like to you know, move that faster or slower based upon the type of material, if I want less stages, if I want to be more aggressive, or if I'm concerned about the ability to, for us to keep um, tracking, you know, you have those capabilities. I also, if I want to change around the, you know, certain movements, so look at the final position of the teeth, for instance, I can look at this stage here. And if I'd like to move that cuspid down, I have the choice of using the movement controls where I can move it very controlled or I can grab and move it down as I please. So again, that's the final position of the tooth. If I like that position better, then when I hit next, it'll auto stage again to put that tooth in that position. I can also change around the attachments, move them around, adjust to a different attachment. 
I also have the ability of adding or subtracting custom IPR or changing the arch form. Now, again, all of these are, are done to have a minimal amount of, of tools so that you can do it chair side with the patient sitting there. Now, once you're happy with the amount of movements, and if you're happy with the staging, I come back here and I can click this button to confirm. And now it's gonna give me the option of downloading the amount of STL files that I like. So for instance, if I decide I'd like to download maybe the first five, I can say, let's do the first five and export those into my account. I can then generate out on a 3D printer, print those models, use a suck down method, give that patient those aligners on the first visit. And so you can now have same day aligners and then send the rest off to, to be professionally manufactured or manufacture myself. Again, the controls are in your hands. So what this entire Meta Orthodontic Suite, as I said, has given us the first new workflow in aligners in many, many years, where everything can be done with the patient chair side, getting the patient input, and really changing the way that aligners is done in a much better way for the doctor and for the companies to produce a better aligner.